Good sir. Good afternoon, Giri. Good afternoon, Chagri sir. Good afternoon, sir. Chagri sir. Hello, Manoj. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Welcome, welcome. Hello, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, Dr. Krishna and Professor Bhaskar Rao. Hello, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Sir. Can we start, sir, or we should wait, sir? Hello. I think we can start. Okay, sir. Good afternoon and welcome you all. Uh, today we have very interesting talk by our eminent scientist and XDGM, Dr. Diyagi Saab. This is the fourth talk of IMS IMD lecture series that was initially planned and now we have started it. It is in response of the commemorate to the 75th anniversary of the independent India. And we are celebrating Ajadi Kamros Mahasu. So, now I'll request Dr. Kohli, sir, kindly introduce the speaker, sir. Thank you, Giri. Thank you, sir. And uh, greetings to everyone. And welcome to the uh, revived lecture series on this auspicious occasion of the 75th anniversary of our independence. And I'm very uh, happy uh, to introduce Air Vice Marshal Professor Ajit Tyagi. Uh, in fact, Dr. Professor Tyagi doesn't need any introduction to this audience. Uh, but at the same time, I think it will be very useful for us to actually see uh, his uh, eminent 
background. Uh, and it's very important that we understand his uh, uh, contributions to uh, to the science of meteorology over uh, a long tenure, uh, and and also uh, very uh, uh, appropriate topic uh, that he is going to uh, share his thoughts on. Uh, Professor Tyagi is currently a, a senior advisor at the Integrated Research and Action for Development, also known as Irade, in New Delhi. And he's also a member of the WMO World Weather Research Program Working Group on Tropical Meteorology Research. Uh, earlier, he had served as the uh, Professor Cortez Forum Chair uh, with the Ministry of Earth Sciences. Uh, uh, soon after retiring, as the Director General of Meteorology of IMD. Uh, and before uh, coming to IMD, he also served as Assistant Chief of Air Staff in Meteorology in the Indian Air Force. Uh, he had served as a uh, Permanent Representative of India with WMO and was also a member of the Executive Council. And he had served on the Governing Councils of uh, the SARC Meteorological Research Center and also IITM Pune. And in fact, as uh, Director General of Meteorology of IMD, he actually led the modernization of IMD's uh, 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 services and brought significant improvements in the weather information and forecasting and warning of high impact weather events in the country. And under his leadership, the agro advisory services were extended to uh, almost 640 districts. He played an important role in organizing the South Asian uh, Climate Outlook Forum, in, in which, in fact, I am privileged uh, to have been associated with him uh, from my uh, responsibilities with WMO Secretariat. And in fact, through his cooperation and strong support, that SASCOF became a reality. And in fact, I am very grateful to him uh, for playing that pioneering role in making sure that SASCOF uh, really came into being and was also supported by IMD in the initial stages uh, uh, to actually to contribute to the global framework for climate services. And in fact, he, uh, in fact, relevant to the particular uh, topic of today, uh, he has been actively associated with the Inter Indian Meteorological Society. Uh, and in fact, he extended that experience even to uh, initiate uh, uh, the planning of the South Asian Meteorological Association, which is actually uh, a, a great success, though it started only recently. Uh, it, it is uh, doing a lot of good work on a regional scale. And in fact, he was also responsible for uh, starting what is known as South Asian Heat Health Information Network, SAHIN, uh, as part of the uh, activities led by Irade. So in that sense, he actually uh, is playing a, a key role in uh, uh, in uh, bringing together the meteorological community and serve the society in a, in a better way. So with that, I uh, am really happy to invite uh, Professor Tyagi uh, to uh, give his lecture on role of meteorological societies. Dr. Tyagi. Thank you, Dr. Giri and Dr. Kumar uh, for your kind words. Uh, it had been uh, really a long journey to be associated with all of you and with your support and guidance uh, we had been able to do a bit to improve the state of meteorological societies in india and also in our neighboring countries uh, i'm thankful to imd and the indian med society for inviting me to give this fourth uh, Ajadi Amrit Mahotsav series of lectures. It was to happen in somewhere in February, in March, but because of the change in the command of the India Med Society, it is now taking place. But thanks once again to both India Med Department and Indian Med Society. Uh, I'm also thankful to all the distinguished participants in this seminar in this webinar, uh, it shows that you are committed uh, to the cause of promoting meteorological society. Uh, it was uh, 
it is not it's a official event and anybody who joins these events shows that they are motivated and uh, to propagate the cause of meteorology so this uh, opening remarks uh, uh, my presentation layout uh, somebody is, is going to giri i requested dr patnaik to upload my presentation okay sir Yes, sir. Please wait. We are doing from our end. If you want, uh, sh shall we present or you want to present from yourself? No, no, no. You, you I, I'm, I'm not good at. There may be some glitches from my end, so it's better. Okay, sir. Give me some time. We, we are, we are about. Okay. So, uh, anyway, you. By the time you load it, let me give. Uh, um, you see the outlay of my presentation. I starting with the historical background of the meteorological societies, because we need to understand that. the origin of these societies how did it take place and how have they evolved over a period of time to address the emerging demands both of the science science and the society this is very important because it's not a static though a broad uh, vision and remains the same but its its application uh, is is uh, what is more important so we'll start with the historical background and see how the you, met societies and have evolved and what is the current status there there are challenges in managing these societies and but they also offer a lot of opportunities for us to contribute uh, to both to science and for the betterment of society now if you look at the history it will be interesting to note that uh, met societies precede national med services in many countries and in the typical case of britain uh, may i have next slide please so the royal med society was uh, traces its origin to a event where on 3 april 1950 some of the leading scientists they decided uh, to start a society to promote advancement and extension of meteorological science by determining the laws of climate and the meteorological phenomena in general so this is what the scientific and the scientists were looking at it and they thought that a society uh, uh, will help in promoting and advancing this part and it is only after this society was formed after a few years the uk met office Uh, started in next slide 191850 next slide please in 1854 by vice admiral fitzroy uh, who had a very extensive uh, experience of of voyages across the globe and also faced various adverse weather or severe weather conditions so essentially it was meant to understand the climatology of the weather or the seas and how to negotiate and how to have a safeguard of it next slide so it it is much later in 1866 followed by 1883 and that society got uh, the royal name added to it by the grant by queen victoria and uh, thereafter its journey has been uh, really remarkable in promoting both science and its capacity building initiatives and also advancement of the community so this is what uh, the uh, the background and most of the countries in the europe at the same time also were on the on the similar level of uh, see understanding uh, having the met societies the necessities of this so like the uh, france uh, the french society started in 1852 followed by the societies in Ita italian meteorological society in 1865 in asia the first society was formed in japan in 1882 it started as a tokyo meteorological society and thereafter in 19 18 1888 it became a meteorological society of japan 
and upgraded to the full-fledged Japan Meteorological Society in 1941. In Germany, the Europe's Meteorological Society started in 1883. So these are the, the societies which in the first stage of advancing the meteorological science, the primary focus of this at that time was to have a better grip on, on the science of weather and climate. Next slide. Next slide. So um, when it comes to America, the next um, country to take plunge as far as the meteorological society formation was the US, which in 1919, the Charles Franklin Brooks of the Blue Hill Observatory in Milton, uh, Massachusetts started this. And the most of the members at the time came from the US Signal Corps, which looked after the US Army weather and also the US Weather Bureau. And they started uh, the Bulletin of American Meteorological Society, the pre prestigious Bulletin of uh, American Med Society, because at that time the monthly weather review was being managed by the US Weather Bureau. So it came as, as, as a supplement to the monthly weather review. Next slide, please. So now these are the societies which in the last century started and mostly in Asia and also in started forming in, in the Latin America. So it started the Chinese Meteorological Society in 1824, uh, followed by Hungarian, um, uh, Finland, Philippines, and then the Indian Med Society was formed in 1957, followed by Czech Med Society of uh, Chinese Taipei, uh, then Korean Meteorological Society and Spain Meteorological Society. So uh, for a period of time, it started from Europe, followed in America, then in Asia, and gradually, as we'll see, it, it is uh, uh, going into uh, Latin America, Africa, uh, so uh, the progression had been uh, depending on the economic and scientific development in different continents. Next. Okay, so this is how, how uh, the societies started forming in Latin America, followed by in Africa, and also uh, the societies in uh, Australia and, and Canada were earlier the chapters of the Royal Met Society, but during this period, they started as, as autonomous uh, metrical society of their countries uh, in the 1980s. Next. So this journey continues and uh, recently the focus primarily had been in Africa uh, where the countries are now started forming the uh, med societies and also over in Asia. So we see that uh, in our neighborhood, Bangladesh has started um, because of COVID, probably they had been dormant. In uh, Sri Lanka, there is no med society, but the meteorologists are part of the Association of Disaster Risk Management. And also in Nepal, there is a society for hydro hydrologists and meteorologists which started in 2002. So some beginning uh, has second place um, in South Asian uh, our neighboring countries to have a med societies. And uh, we want this to uh, move forward and also strengthen our period of time. Next. So, so what we learned from this history, the idea was to tell you that it is not something which um, is organic, which, which takes place over time uh, to, to both state of the science and uh, the societal demands. So uh, see chronology, the geographical spread, as I told you earlier, started in Europe, America, Asia, Latin America, Africa. Hello? Ne earlier slide, please. Okay. Uh, so, but the spread has been unsatisfactory. It, as of now, there are more than 187 
WMO member countries are there, but we have uh, just 60 countries where they are met societies and many of these societies are in a very early stage. Uh, so only some 20, 20 or societies are really active and other 20 are in the stages of which are developing uh, in, into a good state of uh, societies. So out of say good about 190, just 40 to 50 societies exist. So this is not a happy state if we look at the global and most of the least developed and developing countries uh, don't have societies which need uh, the med societies very badly. So uh, world community and unfortunately we had been associated and we have got great praise for the World Meteorological Organization to support national meds services per se, but somehow uh, they don't have probably the priority to support and they think that this is the net national med services that uh, should support the national med societies. So from WMO side, uh, I think there had not been much of initiative and that is one of the reasons why uh, many of the countries in the developing world uh, don't have these med societies. Uh, also, as I told you, um, the standard and quality of the med societies varies widely. And um, as we'll see it, uh, there's a lot of learning needs to be done. And now with virtual communication, it is possible. Uh, and everybody is now looking for international cooperations, collaborations, regional collaborations. So this is the right time that uh, we start focusing in bringing our societies to the next level. Okay, and uh, the role of med societies, uh, as I told you, uh, has evolved over a period of time, and this shows that uh, the societies have to be dynamic, proactive to address the growing demands of the society and advancements in the science. Uh, next slide, please. So, if we look uh, from uh, the presentations and the role of the societies, which over a period of time we have seen, and their activities which I, I'll cover in the next slides is that essentially the beginning was done by the scientists and their focus was on the advancement of metrological science alone uh, at that time. But as uh, they had a better understanding of the subject, uh, they included the metrology and allied sciences. And then by 40s, 1940s, 50s, they applied metrology because of the Second World War and the technologies, the radar technologies, and followed by the satellite technologies. So all these started taking, becoming part of uh, the MET services, and also the metrological societies have started addressing to these. And then, of course, the Earth system, which encompasses ocean, um, atmosphere, land surfaces. And so that they also now have been uh, becoming part of uh, MET societies in advanced countries. Yes, it is yet to take uh, taken into consideration by emerging societies in developing worlds. And then, of course, the climate change is rising now. So all societies have started addressing to this important aspect. Uh, along with the science part, um, uh, another important thing which the societies have uh, done uh, syndicates is the capacity building, outreach, uh, DRR and the sustainable development goals to address how do we address and all. so these are the important uh, aspects science is important but equally important is, is uh, from the society point of view and the med societies is the uh, capacity building outreach awareness uh, uh, also so th this is very important and as I mentioned that yes now the there is opening up, these additional and international collaborations are taking place, MOUs between the societies. Uh, there is a global volunteer uh, forums which are there. There are online programs which is enabling uh, global reach. So this is a very important development. And of course, uh, essentially, initially it used to be a close community of, of the meteorologist and then of the government sector, but for a period of time, it's heartening to see, uh, particularly it has become a, 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 a essential component of, of all developing, uh, developed uh, med societies. 
and it is also being uh, now see, taken up by uh, other societies. And uh, it, it is really heartening to see that how how proactive and responsive they, the med societies have become, that they've started, uh, I think, work on climate and community, or artificial intelligence and citizen science. Uh, so this is, uh, is is very important that uh, we don't uh, we rigid to the to the our original framework, but have to be open and and responsive to the emerging advancements and demands. Next slide, please. Now, now if you look at the American Med Society. Uh, it started with with the monthly weather review journal, uh, which was earlier part of Weather Bureau, but it moved to the American Medical Society. It's 150 years completed, uh, and uh, it continues to be a, a, a journal of eminence. But over a period of time, equally important uh, journals have started, and as Last year, uh, they have introduced, started two journals, which is on community science and artificial intelligence. So they have uh, started with one journal, which is, uh, continues uh, to have a position of eminence. But along with that, they have got 13 journals now. Uh, and uh, uh, over a period of time, de depending on the, the scientific uh, fields in which um, the advancements were taking, Specialized journals have been started. Uh, so it starts with atmospheric sciences, uh, applied met and climatology, physical oceanography, atmosphere, and oceanic technologies, weather forecasting, when part of it, Earth interaction, journal of hydromet, weather, climate, and society. And as said that, yes, we have now art artificial intelligence and Earth system in the community. Similarly, the, the Royal Med Society also has got a similar, I think, approach, uh, and and they also have got a very prestigious general QGRMS with them, which continues. But they also have started uh, uh, journals related to the climate, uh, to the communication part of it. So, so the societies have to be alive to these. Um, uh, you can't just remain tied to single journal part of it. So another important thing, as I told you, uh, this was for the promotion of the meteorology as a science and uh, its applications. So these all scientific activities are being taken care of, which is, of course, the primary aim of the, the society. But along with this, uh, uh, during the last four to five decades, the education part also has uh, taken a preeminence in all the societies. And um, the idea is this program to address the school children, uh, part of it, the graduates, part of it, and the Royal Met Society has a very, very uh, elaborate system uh, through the MetLink part, which enables uh, the capacity building of the teachers, uh, supporting materials, which provides on weather and climate uh, with practicals and learning of instruments. Uh, so so it, it is uh, very good. Uh, please, next slides. I, I am on the education part of it. Sorry. Yeah, so these are the, uh, as I, sorry, I think there has been some. So uh, the journals which have in, been started to take up new topics, uh, both in American Med Society and the Royal Med Society. And as uh, it is last year, they have started the journals on art, artificial intelligence, climate and community, uh, a part of it. So this is what um, their responsiveness uh, to the emerging demands are there. And another important thing which I uh, mentioned was the education is, is taking an important place in the role of societies and uh, a large amount of efforts are being put in by the societies uh, to have education uh, programs at different levels right from the schools 
K-12 training of the teachers. Next slide, please. Okay, uh, so the Royal Met Society has got a very ambitious program through the Met Link, which provides some, uh, online support to the teachers on weather and climate. And they have got uh, practicals, uh, experiments, uh, they loan uh, instruments to the, to the students in the schools. Next. Next. American Med Society has got a very elaborate. Uh, they have a focus on K2 teachers, enabling the teacher assistant thing, and they were certified school teachers. And uh, um, they have more than 22,000 teachers who have been see, trained by this under this program. Uh, and uh, millions of students have benefited. So uh, at this scale, uh, they are working. The country as such is so advanced, but um, their efforts to further educate their young, uh, young population is really remarkable. So they have a K2 teachers program. They have a project atmosphere, project ocean, dedicated data steaming pro programs are there, which, which supplies uh, specific uh, uh, teaching materials. Certified AMS teacher program is there. There is a lot of education uh, material is there, which is available. And then there's a undergraduate course packages are there, which gives extra credit uh, to the students if they, they complete this program. Next, please. The third thing which um, uh, is, is that apart from the education and uh, part of it, uh, there is a need which uh, these societies have felt because of the, uh, the demand of the professionals in various sectors, uh, private as well as the government sector. So to assist them to have uh, some accreditation done and uh, the both American Med Society and the, and the Royal Med Society have got these uh, programs. Uh, Royal Med Society have got certified meteorologist program and uh, um, registered uh, part of this uh, meteorologist program uh, certification in American Nomad Society provides um, for the broadcasters, which is a very important segment of uh, communicating uh, the meteorological services information. Uh, so AMS satisfies the broadcast meteorologist and also uh, uh, certified consulting meteorologist. So this so it is uh, become a hallmark and all employers do look for for such certification next the, another thing which uh, uh, they enable is uh, the career progression of the students and and uh, through various programs right from um, career guide and tools various various um, Guides are there for the, then followed by formal courses, which the universities offer, but then also the informal courses, which the med societies are now offering. They're also linked with the PhD opportunities in various forms. The mentoring is another important uh, service, which they are in, now uh, encouraging both mentors and mentoring. It could be uh, linked and uh, they do enable to students to have a work experience at various places. The skill development related to aviation, marine meteorology, and other issues also are being provided. And uh, they are now promoting in a big way the careers in the climate change. So it's not just the training and education, but how their careers and their employability is there. The societies are also, so that keeps uh, the people engaged. They look forward for the societies, not only for uh, some education, but also how they can be gainfully uh, employed. Next, please. Now, coming to Indian Meteorological Society, uh, this background, see, 
was in the 44th session of the International Science Congress uh, held in Calcutta, which dealt with the uh, societal aspects, part of it. So naturally, the necessity to have a metropolitan society was felt and it was decided uh, to have a met society and director general of then, Dr. Basu, started the society in 1957 and we had a very, very powerful first executive council. All eminent names in, in the mythology are, were the part of it. Dr. Desai, Dr. Banerjee, Mathur, Dr. Mathur, uh, Pisharoti. So, so uh, it started on a, on a very good note, but as we see uh, part of it, in the, in the beginning, it was essentially a departmental activity. Next slide, please. So this is a personal communication from uh, Sri Raghun Sab, who, who, who was very keen, uh, see, supporter of the activities of Met Society. And he, in his personal communication, uh, wrote to me that I inquired, I wanted to know about the origin of Met Society. So he said that he, though he joined India Met Society in the very first year in Delhi, but in entire initial period, he said it was uh, essentially uh, IMED activity. Uh, functions used to take place under the IMS banner, but it used to be mostly attended by the IMED. So uh, I think this is what happens in the beginning. Well, they do require uh, institutional support uh, to have that. And um, this was that stage of early history. But later on from 1980s and particularly in the 1990s, when uh, just started opening up. Next slide, please. Uh, other organizations, particularly the ISRO, uh, SEC, where a lot of eminent mythologists were working, um, I think opened up the door of the Met Society and the first drop met in 1992 started in Ahmedabad and the Ahmedabad chapter was started and thereafter it was followed by other chapters which also became active during this period, especially the Chennai chapter, Calcutta ch chapter, uh, so so this this is how otherwise initially only the Delhi and Pune chapters used to be active, but with the opening up uh, uh, of uh, in, uh, enrolling the other organizations, I think the India Met Society started progressing very well in 1990s. Next slide, please. So I'm mess. I must say the. Is, is doing pretty well as far as the major activities are concerned. And um, it is, uh, I think, uh, we can feel proud that some of these activities have been are going on unbroken or a long period of time. Uh, uh, one important thing which I think, uh, which is not getting due recognition is the number of awards which the IMS offers. Uh, it is much more than the government systems. Uh, which uh, the awards and the recognition of work done by the mythologists in their research, uh, the IMS offers starting from international award to the Young Scientist Award and awards uh, various uh, specialized topics and fields of the mythology. So this is a very, very good, uh, uh, I think, um, work being done by the society. And over a period of time, the the token money which was being given to awards also has been increased uh, substantially, uh, reasonably well, I must say. So this is a good uh, activity, and I'm sure in years to come, it will further be augmented. Another important thing, which is that, yes, uh, right from 1992 onwards, the TROPMET and TROPMET is being held regularly, and over a period of time, uh, participation and the quality of uh, these events have improved, no doubt. Uh, on an average, 400 to 500 papers have been uh, submitted and uh, about 100, 150 participants do part, take part in these events. So this is a good sign. Uh, uh, 
apart from this um, uh, IMS Pune chapter organizes the annual monsoon workshop. Uh, they are publication uh, not of very, I think, uh, talk about, but then I'm happy that uh, Vayumundal, which in between was was not being regularly brought out and it became from quarterly to annual issue, is now back stream and we have two issues per year. Hopefully it will, it will go back to the quarterly journal and uh, bulletins by various chapters is, are being taken up, particularly the Pune, Ahmedabad, Chennai, Kolkata. Uh, so this, this is a good thing that this chapters, some of the chapters are doing good work. And we also had started a popular book series. Uh, this also could be a, a, a good source for the, for the general public. Uh, specialized workshop for media teachers and others have been conducted by chapters. Uh, society also has MOUs uh, with uh, with societies um, uh, and also uh, society professional societies within the country to 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 work together in different fields and to learn from the best practices. Next slide, please. So as I mentioned, you. Uh, so the, today the, we have more than 30 chapters. Uh, so, but it's not a very happy state to say that uh, not all chapters are active. Uh, in fact, <laughs> like med societies, also there is a, a wide variation in involvement and uh, performance of these chapters. Uh, there are chapters which are doing excellent work. They are autonomous um, and uh, and um, so I am Espune chapter is one of them, uh, which organizes workshops regularly, also distinguished lecture series, and um, their WhatsApp group is very active, very proactive so, um, part of. So this is a good sign uh, that chapters by itself can be, uh, and in fact, they are the source of strength for the Yemen society. And I wish uh, that other chapters also start emulating the example of these chapters next. Next. Now, this is the MDAP chapter. I told, uh, mentioned you earlier that, see, the opening of the Met Society, I think this was a very important event where all eminent, uh, see, name in the mythology and the, and, and the remote sensing, uh, Starting from, from Dr. Pisharoti to the Hausa, Hariharan, Opian Kala, Narayanan, Dr. Pandey, Desai. So uh, they really, I think, similar to what happened in Europe, Britain, or in the US, these, signed, uh, these people felt the urge to start a Met Society chapter in Ahmedabad. And it started in 1980, and they were the pioneers to start the PropMet. And apart from PropMet, a number of other activities also are being taken regularly by the Ahmedabad chapter. So this is really commendable. And non, not only these two chapters, the Chennai is another chapter uh, which regularly she organizes Northeast Monsoon Workshop. And they have got very good rapport with, with the state administration in organizing various capacity building in local language. So so uh, the chapters, the outreach, capacity building, they can play, play a very important role. And um, as as uh, case of uh, Chennai, uh, also the Bhuneshu chapter used to be very active, the Hyderabad chapter, the Guwahati chapter, Calcutta is, is another. So they are the major chapters, but then same thing cannot be said about the another 15, 20 chapters. And uh, we have to look into how we can motivate and enthusiasm these chapters to to come up to a next level. Next. Now, uh, awards, as I mentioned, you um, uh, have constituted various awards starting from the IMS International Awards, prestigious uh, Gilbert Walker Award on Monsoon Research. We have been able uh, she rightly deserved uh, eminent monsoon meteorologists have been 
conferred with this award starting from Professor Shukla, Professor Das, Monti, Sikasa, Dr. T. N. Krishnamurti, Dr. Susna Gardgil, Keshamurti, and Professor T. B. Joseph, and the recently he was conferred with the Gilbert Walker Award. So, so it, it keeps and it needs to be popularized to get a nomination from the world monsoon community. So uh, this is what the society should do it, that it is a prestigious international award on monsoon research and monsoon research is a global phenomenon. So we should uh, publicize this award in, in a bigger way. Next. Apart from this, uh, we have uh, IMS has had biennial awards, which uh, were started by donation of our uh, mythologists, and they have been renamed and uh, award money has been increased. So they, they are on the monsoon search, uh, atmospheric observations and technologies, uh, weather and climate services. Next slide, please. application of satellite data and also the modeling part of it. And we recently started uh, the IMS Young Scientist Award and carries handsome money of 50,000 rupees. So this is to promote first authors, young scientists of the age, less than 45 years. Next. So the TROPMET is an is, is a, is a activity which I think every every mythologist or the research worker and young student look forward every year and that document uh, participation becomes an event for. And um, it started 1992, uh, Ahmedabad chapter, and it has been continuing without break. Even during the COVID uh, years, the document was done in a, in a remote manner in virtual world at Shillong. said Shillong. Uh, it was very, very well managed and based on that experience, the uh, Intromet 2021 was done at Kochi, you said. So this is uh, COVID uh, virtual and they were well, well, participation was very good virtually and very well managed. So this is and based on this, I, uh, we learned a lot from this and we could use that uh, in organizing uh, international monsoon uh, workshop this year, uh, which was done to, to meet the various time zones of Eastern and Western parts of the globe. So uh, I think it does give that confidence to the uh, international community that India uh, and the Yemen Society was a very active partner in the, this international monsoon workshop uh, can, can be of the world class. So this is, uh, I think, we should, should feel proud of the top met series of events which take place. Next slide, please. <coughs> so the Silver Jubilee of the top met, uh, it, it was a happy coincidence, was also celebrated in Sek and Dhaba in 2017, and uh, it marks marked the 25th year of uh, series of uh, workshops. Uh, and the workshop uh, it was inaugurated by the Secretary of uh, Space. Next slide, please. Next slide. Next slide. Yeah, so is it, is Dr. Kiran Kumar, uh, Chairman Isro, inaugurated this secretary, MOS, uh, DG, and uh, Director Sack were part of the inaugural session. And Professor T.N. K. Krishnamurti uh, delivered the plenary talk. Next slide. So it, it, it was a very, very, I think uh, we had 
senior lot of the SEC who were part of uh, the top mid 92 also participated in this event. Uh, so the intromet started in 1997 in Delhi. The first intromet was took place. It was on the Asian monsoon and then the role of air pollution. It's followed by the top mets, intromets every fourth year. The latest intromet in 2022 and was held at QSET. Next slide, please. So the, these are the historical pictures of the first intromet being held in Delhi and the latest one which was held QSET 2021. Um, and uh, next slide, please. Next slide. Yeah, so these are the various uh, workshops, seminars, which are being conducted by chapters. So, so the, the, it does take place. The activities do take place. Only thing their scale has to 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 increased and 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 also by chapters which are not doing these activities needs to be increased to take up these. Next. Popular book series um, uh, started uh, with, uh, with on weather satellite by Professor Kelke and uh, numerical weather prediction by Professor Bhaskar Rao. We are also had on radio communication by uh, Dr. Srivastava and, and Keshu Murthy on dynamics. So, so these series have to continue and more uh, topics can be covered by the IMED Society under this series. Next. MOUs, as I mentioned, uh, uh, have started. Uh, we have uh, MOU with the Association of Agrometeorologists and also this MOU with the IMA Society and Oceans Society of India. Uh, and uh, joint sessions are being held in each other's conferences as part of it. Because these are the two areas which are very much related to the um, objectives and the uh, of the Med Society, Indian Med Society. Apart from this, we also have uh, MOUs with American Med Society, Canadian Med, Med Society, and the Australian Med Society, but these are mostly on paper. We need to really make use of their strengths through these MOUs that how best we can benefit. So th this is a good, good part of uh, that we have uh, MOUs, but how, how do we fully exploit these MOUs is to be taken up. Next. So these are the historical first of uh, uh, glimpses. Uh, first president, first executive council, first drop mat, Professor Pisarot is there, uh, first intromet, first award of uh, Gilbert Walker and first being the side of our to the Keso Murthy side. Next. Now, the current status, if we analyze this and, and look for how we have to take it forward, uh, it's doing very well. I, I would know with, with the constraints, which used to be a major constraint was the funding till recently. Um, uh, uh, we are able to manage annual activities um, uh, reasonably well, um, uh, but it, it has become a routine. We seems to have reached a plateau, but now we have to move to the next level. And for this, uh, we have to be proactive in meeting the emerging scientific and societal demands. It cannot be continue to, we cannot continue with the business as usual practice and mindset. We need to enhance and diversify the activities of the society continuously to meet changing needs. So this is very important and uh, uh, we have to become uh, an authoritative voice on issues related to the weather, climate and high impact weather. Uh, in the country, uh, we should be learned both, uh, we should be respected uh, both within the government system and the general public, the 
advice the status reports which we should bring out uh, as the uh, many societies do it and apart from this um, also we have to take up the indian med society should take up a leadership role in promoting and assisting med societies in south and south asia next now the the, the constraints which which we probably and the reasons why we are not able to move from, to the next level is that we don't have a long term plan uh, uh, and we have to take up new initiatives so it, it requires planning with the funding also in the long run how it is going to be there so these are the major challenges if we are assured of the long term funding we can plan long term activities because within the tenure of 1 to 2 years if we put up a proposal by the time we get funding the tenure of the and see gets over so until as we have a funding of next 5 years or 10 years available the short funding then only major activities can be planned and put into practice infrastructure both functioning of the office and the staff is inadequate and without that support i think again the functioning of the society does suffer now coming to the membership we do have a reasonable membership but it is not i think for the country of our size just to tell you that the american med society have a membership of 13000 and the chinese med society have a membership of 19000 and we are stuck at 3500 or so so positively we should target to reach level of 10000 at least in coming years um, uh, spread our, our wings to the academic institutions and the various other agencies uh, and, and and institutions so that we can really spread because the membership are are your our ambassadors in various sectors which can take um, our, our activities forward uh there are limited uh, education and outreach activities but for some uh, one workshop or training programs we don't have planned systematic national level education or outreach activities which is uh, is very much essential and also we have to formalize our en engagement with academic institutions industry uh, civil society and ngos we don't have a formal or institutional uh, engagement with these uh, bodies which are so important uh, the current state of climate change um, and its awareness and adaptation mitigation disaster risk reduction and so on. next so for this um, we have to be ims has to be driven the way forward is the long term strategic plan and uh, nc should not see focus on the day to day running of the society uh, and uh, uh, long term plans cannot be we see managed by within the tenure of uh, uh, given uh, nc so this have to be supported by by committees and, and the commissions which which the society should form and where the experts can take these strategic plans uh, to the uh, conclusion uh, also um, uh, we have to initiate work on uh, uh, climate services how how do we now take this up the promote the pu pu private public and academia interactions and also how do we Uh, formulate a med policy uh, this is also a very important long pending thing happening focus has to be now on education and training uh, now also there is been a felt need that similar to environment uh, which is been taught as as a, as a in the schools and also in in, in, in the colleges uh, slabs or curriculum related to weather and climate also should be included uh, in the new education policy and the society should take up this uh, very important part 
because this also is linked with the with the employability because once you have these topics in the school or, or the colleges uh, you, you can uh, the one with the qualifications in msc in meteorology or atmospheric sciences can get employability also so this is one one important area uh, which needs to be taken up uh, now uh, societies uh, are not run by elected uh, representative they do guide uh, part of it but it is the volunteers and experts and especially the senior people if we can uh, can really engage them in any fruitful activities the societies uh, can immensely benefit uh, also we have been talking about but somehow consultancy and research projects uh, which uh, we have got seniors uh, experts with us um, uh, we have not been able to take up so this is another area uh, yes we need to support uh, the chapters uh, to take activities because ultimately they are uh, they are the one which which really deliver on the ground and also uh, we have to have international visibility uh, by organizing various international events and also to take a leadership role uh, uh, by promoting med societies and assisting them in South and Southeast Asia. Next, please. Now, the funding is, 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 a, is a concern and situation has improved uh, thanks to the institutional support and, and a very, very liberal donation. Let's acknowledge uh, the donation by Professor Bhaskar Rao uh, and also uh, let's uh, Raghun Sahib. They see really donated and made a beginning which needs to be see followed by many of us. Uh, societies do look for the donations and crowdfunding is, is, is a flavor of the day so let's let's work on this funding but apart from this uh, society has to work on long term funding from mos dst and ministry of climate change and environment and forest institutional memberships have to increase as of now only i met the ncma rfwr institutional members they can be increased industry and csr under csr can be a good source of funding donations uh, research pro proposals can generate funds and uh, funding support uh, for education and outreach activities can be through various trusts like IGMG, PREMG, uh, trust is there and uh, then also uh, other trusts are there which promote such activities. Next please. Now these are the list of uh, ministries um, uh, uh, and the departments which have uh, weather and climate as a component in some form or other and um, we have to engage these all and many more right from uh, the, the center the state level and how we can engage them and mutually benefit uh, by interaction is is, uh, the, is very important and needs to be taken up for, and some of the chapters local chapters uh, are uh, are making use of these th interactions but these needs to be, I think, scaled up and also formalized. Next. Academic institutions, you see, uh, the uh, last presentation or talk given by Professor Desh was, was very, very, I think, exhaustive about the role of academic institutions in, in, in climate and weather and climate. Now, now we have uh, prestigious institutions uh, where, where now meteorology and atmospheric sciences and light subjects are being taught, starting from the Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore. And the, the, the number of IITs are there, the central universities are there, the state universities are there, and also the private universities are there, the MIT, Sharda, uh, SOS, in Bhuneshwar, Terry, SRM University, ISOs are there, but uh, somehow their engagement with the uh, IMS have been limited. Uh, 
we have been organizing uh, the talk night at some of these institutions and they have been helpful but apart from this uh, a long term uh, say involvement uh, and contribution uh, of these organize uh, these institutions to the ims has been very limited so we have to really see that how fruitfully we can uh, engage these institutions because they have got immense uh, source of uh, knowledge and also uh, the student uh, who, who can really volunteer and contribute to the, uh, the promotion of meteorological science as well as outreach activities. So this is one important area and um, that should be uh, taken up um, through some formal uh, engagement. Next. So I told you uh, volunteers are the, are the need of the arts and they can do a wide varieties of uh, take up wide varieties of activities um, uh, um, assisting the chapters the IMS staff they can be part of the contribute to the IMS committees and various programs can become a mentor um, uh, senior people can become a mentor uh, uh, the students can become a student ambassador um, uh, their campuses, educate the local community, then adapt a school for weather education. So, so uh, we have to see that how we can encourage the volunteers to and recognize their and popularize this this particular aspect, because no society can run just by the limited number of uh, elected representatives. Next. Now, coming to the regional med society, uh, I, I'll try to cover this aspect is because this is what is happening as the weather needs no political bound, no boundaries, and um, we are affected uh, regions, and especially the, the climate change is going to be, cause a lot many such impacts, uh, transboundary impacts also. So. Uh, and by working together, uh, as been shown by the Royal Med Society, uh, supporting the uh, European Med Society, uh, we can really uh, work both for science and technology uh, part, and also education and training by 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 regional collaboration and uh, supporting the weaker societies. The region. So this is the regional med societies have really help the society, smaller societies and, and benefited by the mutual collaborations. Next. So uh, the European Med Society is a very good example. Apart from this, there is a Latin American and uh, Iberian Federation of Ecological uh, Societies. They are Spanish speaking countries uh, for 12 of them. East African Med Society is there. And we have started South Asian Meteorological Society, uh, not society, the association, and American Med so African Med Society is the recent addition uh, in this list. Next. So, uh, European Med Society is, is, is a very successful, I think, uh, initiative in which now they have a uh, 39 member societies, almost all countries uh, of the Europe are a form of uh, this uh, member of this society and uh, 28 associate members are there. And uh, the European Met uh, Society is supporting a small countries with a population like Andorra, which is just 75,000 people. So, so this is what uh, the role the, you, the regional Met societies can, can really play. Next. Similarly, this is the FISMET acronym for the Latin American Society. There are 12 countries there. It started in 1986. Next. Next, please. Okay, South Asian Metrological Association was the blessings and guidance of founding members, 50 of them, senior meteorologists from nine South Asian countries um, uh, helped us to form uh, this, this association on 3rd August 9, uh, 2020. It was very encouraging to see 
that uh, the countries which which are in, in, in a difficult situation like Afghanistan uh, and uh, Myanmar, uh, the meteorological representatives of them actively participated and supported this initiative. And uh, the vision of the society is to sharing knowledge of weather and climate uh, without borders and uh, uh, meteorology for sustainable development of the region are the two. And uh, of course, the capacity building is, is, the, is the key area of activities. Next. These are the objectives. Uh, it is essentially, I think, our universal uh, uh, is the advancement of metrological and allied sciences, the networking, um, application of metrology for um, the, the sustainable development and promote public-private partnership. Uh, so, so these are the standard objectives. Um, part of it, which um, have got no political or tones, uh, but uh, of science and societal part only. Next. And um, in this uh, COVID period, uh, because uh, society association doesn't have any financial funding available, but thanks to the technology and support from our, some of the institutions like Dhaka University, the SRM University, uh, we were able to organize many of these webinars virtually and important among these were the webinar on, on the works of the Nobel laureate to celebrate that and present by Professor Yasinari and Professor Sachit Rao on Anabe and Hazelman. So it, it was a very, very, I think, well received, uh, supported by the SRM University Andhra Pradesh. And another important event was the World Meteorological Day of event 2022. It was theme of early warning and early action. Uh, and uh, had the privilege to have a keynote address from the Secretary MOS, Dr. Ravi Chandran, also parts from Dr. Sanj Sanjay Srivastava, he is the head of the DRR of the Escape Bangkok. Uh, Professor Kamal from the Dhaka University, Vice Chancellor, Dr. Mata, uh, Dr. Gemso, uh, he's at DG Isimor, and Dr. Mandira Sresta, head of the climate services of the Isimor. Uh, similarly, uh, we also have been doing webinars and training workshop. Next, please. Next. Uh, climate science quiz, which uh, was done and earlier to that uh, ozone uh, quiz was done, which was a virtual quiz with the uh, participants of 13,000 students uh, of the ozone quiz was there. And uh, we, uh, there was a training workshop on atmospheric observations, uh, which was organized full day workshop. Next. Uh, also, there are, there are events which are on uh, high impact weather events. So, heat waves of South Asia, uh, the participation from um, Bangladesh and uh, India and Sri Lanka. Also, uh, webinar on lightning, how the safety part. We are working in these arts uh, jointly with our partners, uh, that is Sahin and the Sunlet Nepal. Next. Uh, so, uh, the SAMA is essentially a, a, a virtual organization. Uh, we have founding members located in all nine uh, member countries. Advisory panel also uh, two from each country. The elected executive council members from all nine countries. The, the key uh, support team is the executive coordination team, which are the volunteers, uh, which are doing all these uh, spread work and we a new initiative which has been taken is, is the formation of seven scientific committees of which uh, the numeric weather prediction and the satellite committees have come up with very good recommendations based on the feedback received from the nine member countries and we have turned out a plan of uh, uh, 
online workshop and training program for the numerical weather prediction uh, WRF model, which will have both the theoretical classes and online uh, practicals with support from the CDAC or IITM, depending on the availability of resources. We are promoting regional collaboration. Next slide, please. We are working with South Asian Federation of Agriculture uh, Ecologists, South Asian Street Health Information Network, South Asian Lightning Network. Uh, we are also working with the mode on mountain meteorology and rhymes or capacity building or South Asia. And we are looking forward for collaboration with the other regional bodies. Next. Now, another initiative which has uh, is, is of real interest is the International Forum of Med Societies. It is, uh, is again uh, is a virtual uh, framework where, where volunteers, senior volunteers are, are contributing and uh, uh, to unite and exchange and support med societies um, worldwide. Next. So um, among others, its objective is to assist in developing and promoting capacity building efforts that produce effective and sustainable service capabilities in developing countries, assist developing and meteorological societies to strengthen themselves, help start new new meteorological societies in countries where none exists, facilitate cooperation between meteorological societies worldwide. So uh, I think this is a very good initiative uh, uh, in the developing and least developed countries, how uh, we can help them uh, to start med services or strengthen their existing med societies. Next. So this is uh, uh, the IFMS Council and uh, Professor Dash from Asia is, is, is part of this executive council and he's also working on education and training uh, initiative of the uh, IFMS. And um, so it, it provides IMS a linkage uh, to the IFMS and also to SAMA uh, to work on some of these, these programs together uh, where we can really contribute uh, to this region. Next. Oh, so this is, okay, next please. Now, this is an example of uh, African Med Societies which are being now supported. Uh, six new societies are expected to start this year and uh, African uh, uh, Regional Med Societies is coming up. And um, uh, there are examples of uh, Andorra and, and the Iceland, which the European Med Society has supported. So similarly, it is expected these regional Med Societies will be able to support some of the new societies uh, through training opportunities and, and uh, other, other capacity building programs. Next, please. To sum up, uh, See, the med societies have an important role and which is becoming much, much, much more, see, urgently required in view of the climate change and, and uncertainties uh, involved uh, for promoting mythology and allied sciences and their societal applications. So both science and societies are becoming important and the med societies can be a bridge between the two. Uh, within the given uh, constraints, IMS has been performing pretty well, but then we have to see build on our strengths. And uh, let me, uh, I think, acknowledge the contribution of, of, of past and national councils of the of the India Med Society, which under difficult funding and other constraints have been able to manage many of these activities. And uh, you know, what uh, really is that the India and the India Med Society has got a potential uh, with so much eminent, uh, see academic institutions and the mythologists, uh, a large number of students. Uh, we can really emerge as a premier med society 
and uh, I am sure uh, it presents society headed by Dr. Kumar, who has got international um, experience and networking. Uh, uh, we can move to the next level. And uh, of course, uh, we have to also take a leadership role and show our see, presence in the South Asian countries. And I'm happy both IMD and India Med Society has been helping Sama in this endeavor. And we do acknowledge and look forward that IMS uh, should be able to uh, extend help through these institutions um, uh, like uh, uh, IMD, IM, uh, NCMR, WFI, TM, and POIS in various uh, training programs and also providing services. So this is there. And I'm very helpful that together we can make this happen. Uh, I'm really thankful uh, to the organizers and, and the patients of uh, all of you for your, this, uh, this, uh, this talk. Uh, I, I strongly feel that we, we can do it. And so look forward for support of all of you to the cause of promoting that society. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Tagi sir, for uh, giving a very comprehensive uh, view about the IMS since its inception and how it has progressed with the difficulty and a lot of progress it has also made and also what I am IMS should do also because there are yes as you have pointed out yes at, at now we should have a ten thousand members yes this is also required we have to improve our, our membership drive and. And your commitment, sir, that the uh, IFMS, International Federation of Med Society, that during your presidency time also, yes, we were deeply involved with them and a lot of activity also were with that, uh, the IFMS. And <clears throat> and the particularly the recently that you you have also started the how the regional med society, that regional med society that is also very important because an IMS can take leadership and particularly your contribution for the SAMA, the South Asian Metallurgical Society. And yes, this is your initiative, sir, actually. And uh, we have attended many functions, many meetings from the South Asian country. They also were uh, actively involved in this society function. And uh, as you also highlighted, there are many more things IMS can do. And uh, then if people might have got a very good uh, idea about this thing. And uh, yes, uh, we are following you and uh, we will take guidance. And we are working with uh, you from uh, last many years for the in this society. And still, uh, whenever we need something and uh, we are taking your guidance. So your your contribution to society is tremendous. And you are the fellow also and president of IMS. Then, so all these things you as in all capacity have contributed. We have worked together for international event, national event, drop mat, seminar, teaching for teaching faculty, for many things. And this networking has helped IMS to highlight its activity. And thank you very much, sir, for highlighting all this uh, thing and even some guy and giving some things what IMS do further. So that also, I think, our new team, uh, our new president, sir and all things will contribute. So before panel, I'll request our president, sir, to kindly say a few words. Thank you, Patnaik, and I also join you in uh, warmly thanking Professor Tyagi for this excellent uh, overview and also uh, his thoughts uh, about uh, the way forward for IMS in, in particular. And in fact, so his thoughts uh, very much resonate well uh, with our own thoughts on how we can go forward and actually raise the profile of IMS. And in fact, as um, I, I, I'm happy to see that Dr. Kelker also chipped in uh, with his suggestion that I should give some uh, uh, some idea on, on how we, we, we want to go forward. And as you rightly pointed out, there are uh, many constraints, for example, for IMS so far has been a kind of voluntary based uh, society with very little infrastructural support to provide the continuity uh, 
uh, that it requires. Uh, so, in fact, we are actually looking at that particular challenge. Uh, and also, as you actually clearly uh, indicated that it's IMS is not just the National Council. It has to be uh, driven by the members and, and their expertise and uh, capabilities. I think that is what we would like to uh, see how we can uh, motivate that. So there are two ways in, in actually doing that. One is to uh, create uh, and empower thematic working groups, which can actually help uh, the society uh, in focusing on specific aspects that you have uh, pointed out. And also there are many other things that we need to address. So that is one uh, way to do that. The other way is actually to make the local chapters more uh, participatory in even in the national level activities. Uh, so far, local chapters have been mostly focused on their local uh, activities and very occasionally except for things like TROPMET, uh, they get into the national activities. But I think on an ongoing basis, the local chapters should be participatory in driving the national agenda for the society. So this is uh, this is another uh, aspect that we are trying to uh, address. Uh, so that said, I think we have uh, uh, taken into account all the uh, gaps that you have identified in uh, 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 in IMS activities. In it has you know, as you rightly said, it has reached a kind of plateau. Uh, we need to actually shake ourselves and and uh, build more energy to actually go to the next level. So that is where uh, we are focusing on. And uh, in fact, uh, the, uh, I think the, the major constraint uh, so far has been that uh, we, we, we need a, a very efficient communication uh, mechanism uh, to actually to help uh, communicate with the members and also members to uh, drive the uh, society activities. So that is where I think we need to uh, do some more work even in fact as part of the even in the national elections national council elections we have seen how uh, challenging it is to contact all the members and even the participation of the members in the election process has been very uh, uh, low. So these are the things that we have to address to make more members more active and more participatory in the society. Uh, so that is going to be one of our key uh, focus uh, areas uh, to address. And we are uh, actually working on uh, on all these aspects as part of the National Council uh, deliberations. And I hope we will be able to make a, make a mark and also bring in the uh, capacities that we have, not only within India, but we have a number of overseas membership. Uh, we need to see ways to connect to the international community through these members and, and make ourselves uh, a, 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 a capable platform or in, of Indian Metallurgical Society. We have so much expertise and uh, enthusiasm. We need to make best use of that uh, and also give us a good reputation on the international scene. So with those remarks, I once again uh, Thank uh, Professor Tyagi for his excellent uh, presentation, and I am uh, uh, assure him that we'll we have uh, we'll keep in mind all his suggestions and and try to uh, do our best to address many as many as possible. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.